I put on my raincoat and mentally prepare to start cycling. 2.3 kilometers. The pouring rain and freezing wind are blowing in my face. Today, no luck for a tailwind. When I arrive at the office, the first thing I hear is, Mark, remember that project you worked on so hard for the last six months? Yeah. Well, sorry man, but the client killed it. Can you please start working on the copy for this website now? They, wanted to make you, they want you to make it a little bit less fun, and they need it by 10 a.m. Thanks. 24 hours later, I put on my raincoat, and I mentally prepare to start cycling. 2.3 kilometers. Again. This is not the sequel of the famous movie Groundhog Day. I'm not Bill Murray. This was my life for years. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed my job, but I was seeing the same faces and the same places every single day. Sounds familiar? Until one day, I was on my bike in the pouring rain, obviously, and this time I was actually seeing myself from the top, and uh, I saw the same route that I was taking to work every day. And I really thought, is this it? Is this going to be the same for the rest of my life? It reminded me of this quote of Einstein who said, insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. That's how it felt for me that I was taking the same route and it was almost that I was living in the same circle every single day. And I refused to accept that fact. So I quit my job, left my apartment, and picked a better route to work the entire world. But how was I supposed to make that happen? I'm also not Elon Musk, so I cannot take a Falcon X or a Hyperloop to go to the other side of the world. So I came up with this idea called the Backpacker Intern. And the idea was that I was going to trade my skills, not for money, but for room and board at companies abroad. Would it work? No idea. But when I posted the project on my Facebook page, people seemed to like it. And not long after that, it got picked up by global media. To me, it was crazy to see how my ideas suddenly got spread all over the world. And I saw myself on Adweek, MTV, Entrepreneur, and many more. And the job offers literally came from every corner of the planet. Here are a few of my favorites. Be our backpacker intern, get tandoori chicken in return. <laughs> Internship proposition in Transylvania with vampires. <laughs> and this is a cool one. Do you want to be a gardener in Thailand? Little did I know, five years on, I'd be on this stage telling you how I came to become the best Thai gardener the world has ever seen. <laughs> Just kidding. But if you have the desire to become a gardener in Thailand, do let me know because I can hook you up. <laughs> Next to these fun offers, I actually got more than 750 job offers from all over the world. And that all happened in just the first week. It gave me the opportunity to work for companies I previously only dreamt of working for. So now they actually wanted to hire me and it really felt like the world was turned upside down. And thanks to this experience, I had the opportunity to work with wonderful people from Red Bull headquarters in Austria, uh, UNICEF New Zealand, uh, Ogilvy in Cape Town, I worked at Amnesty International in Thailand. Um, and basically what I learned from it is that the world is such a diverse place of people that you can learn so much from. For example, I was working in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro and I was helping out a charity that helps uh, ex-drug traffickers deal with their problems by the use of football. So football is for them a way to learn about team spirit, uh, about um, get, getting more self-confidence, and basically having a lot of fun. And I still remember the first day on the pitch, I heard this noise in the background like super loud. It was like bang, bang, bang. And I'm, and I'm like really joyful. So I walked to one of the kids and I said, hey, cool man, fireworks. 
And then the kid, like full of tattoos, 16 years old, looks up to me and he's like, no, no, professor, shootings. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, it was just for me crazy to realize that just a few blocks away there were, was an actual shooting happening. And for them, this was just like any other day. And it made me realize how privileged I was when I grew up in the Netherlands safely. A few months after this, one of the most crazy things ever happened. I got invited to work with Grammy Award winner Nal Rogers. In case you don't know his name, you most likely know at least one of his songs. For example, he created Get Lucky with Daft Punk and Pharrell Williams. But he also worked with Madonna, Bon Jovi, Duran Duran, uh, Sam Smith, and the list goes on. And he was so kind to invite me to go to a studio with him in uh, Los Angeles. And suddenly I was sitting on the couch with um, Avicii was sitting next to me. Uh, in front of me was Chris Martin from Coldplay. And the three of them were creating a track together. So basically three global superstars making music. Uh, that was a magical experience for me as someone who sings with the grace of a crying baby. In Liverpool, I had the honor to meet up with Malala Yousafzai. In case you don't know her, please Google her story. And then you'll find out why she won the Nobel Prize for Peace. And she told me that everyone can change the world, but that no one can do it alone. So whenever you have a great idea, don't be afraid to step up and ask for help. And you notice that more people will align with your mission and then you can actually achieve way more things than you first would have thought by yourself. The journey even brought me all the way to the coldest continent in the world, Antarctica. And I was working for a cruise company and helping them with branding and marketing. And since I've now actually worked on every single continent of the world, I can tell you for sure who are the best dressed colleagues on the planet. They're not French, they're not Italians, they're actually not even humans, they're penguins. And after my journey, I realized that I was not alone in this desire, but that there's generations stuck in similar routines especially amongst millennials, of whom 78% value experiences over money. What do you prefer more? Getting a big paycheck or collecting stamps in your passport? More and more people are signing up for an experience-driven lifestyle. A life where work and play are combined. A life where the world is your office. And I'm also one of them, and I'm not alone. And there's actually a name for a person who lives this lifestyle. Digital nomad. So what's a digital nomad? Nomad is just an old word for travelers in ancient times when it was much harder to get from place to place. And digital is just another word for internet. Basically, it's a person who can, use, uh, who can combine work and travel by using the power of the almighty Wi-Fi. And if you think that digital nomads are just a bunch of backpackers, they might look like that. But they're actually people who are professionals who are making money with the freedom to work from anywhere in the world. And they use this freedom to travel. Because let's be honest, travel is the most awesome thing ever, right? But if you think that life as a digital nomad is like a never-ending vacation, I'm going to wake you up from that dream. Life as a digital nomad is still like real life. It looks amazing on Instagram, like we all do. But behind the likes, filters, and hashtags are actually a lot of pain, struggles, and setbacks. Imagine you have a meeting with your most important client, but this time you are on the other side of the world. That means you have to get up in the middle of the night, dealing with the different time zones, 
it's 35 degrees, uh, the air conditioning doesn't work, it's horrible Wi-Fi, and there's a family of mosquitoes in your room. I can tell you from personal experience, that's not a good recipe for success. Life on the road can get pretty stressful, especially when you don't have a steady income. I've been broke twice. And explaining to your parents that you're not able to financially take care of yourself when you're 29 years old, I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm not sure if parents really like this whole digital nomad movement, but I'm really grateful that my parents could help me out. There have been moments where I've never felt so alone in my whole life. Since I'm always traveling or on the other side of the world, uh, it meant that I had to miss a lot of friends' birthdays, weddings, family gatherings, children being born. I even missed two funerals. And then there is no shoulder to cry on or a friend to get a hug with or to drink a beer with. You have to deal with these emotions all by yourself. But despite these downs, I have never felt so alive. Let's look at why. As a digital nomad, your daily routine is different. So every day is an adventure. Just think about the new places you'll be able to explore, or the new smells or sounds or people you'll meet along the way. And let's not forget to mention the food variety. And if trying out a new taste means that you have to sit on the toilet for a week because your stomach doesn't agree with your adventurous appetite, well, then you just have to sit through it. In the United States, people spend an average of four years of their lives in a car. That's four years stuck in a commute. As a digital nomad, you don't suffer that fate. You don't even need a car. So that's better for the environment, it's better for your wallet, and it, the most importantly, it gives you more time. So it means more time for sleeping, more time for yourself, for working out, more time for your children, or more time to make children, or at least practice a lot, if you want. <laughs> and another big uh, advantage is that the world will become your office because you're working from your laptop, basically, you know, home is where the Wi-Fi connects automatically, so you can decide wherever you are at your best. So just ask this question to yourself. Where do you actually get the most work done? Is it inside the office? Or is it at a place where you decide where you're at your best? For some people, that's in a coffee place, at home, or in a library. And as a digital nomad, you have the freedom to choose wherever that is. And that not only saves money on real estate, but it actually makes people more productive. According to Harvard Business Review, it makes people 13.5% more productive. That's, that's also one of the reasons why you see co-working and co-living spaces popping up everywhere like this one in the jungle of Ubud in Indonesia. Again, these are people that are on their flip-flops in their swimming pants, but some of them are actually working for multi-million dollar companies or even owning one of those companies. And if you still think that talent can only be found in Silicon Valley, that you have to be there to build an awesome career, I'm gonna tell you that the talent nowadays and the best people are not in Silicon Valley. They're in Silicon Valley, <laughs> Silicon Delhi, and basically Silicon Anywhere. With the tools available today, work is no longer a place. It can happen from anywhere, anytime, with anyone from any space. So I remember that I was trying to escape the rain in Amsterdam again. So I started actually a company called Wonderbrief where we help people to live life as a digital nomad. And me and my co-founder decided to uh, fly away from this horrible weather in Amsterdam 
Uh, it was almost like the other side of the wall of Game of Thrones. It was just, we had to get out. So we landed, and then we found out that it was the rain season. But while we're hiding in the rain, we actually got to know a lot of amazing people who are also living this digital nomad life. And I even met uh, a CTO and now co-founder of my company. So I hear you thinking, like, what is there to learn from these journeys and this way of traveling and living? Now, if I zoom out again, I think about the fact that I was on my bicycle and my circle was just those few kilometers and seeing the same faces in the same places. But now, by actually traveling, traveling and pushing myself to go out there, I was seeing constantly new faces and new places. And I got to know so many interesting people um, where, you know, the, basically the barriers between human beings started to disappear. While we may not all be the same culturally speaking, uh, we are all connected. So if there's one thing that I've learned from working and traveling on all these continents, it's simple. The more people you know, the more you know yourself. So the more people you know, the more you know yourself. All of us are on this journey of life, seven billion of us. Imagine a life where your route to work is always different. Think about the new people you'll meet and the new places you'll be able to explore. And then along the way, it won't always be easy. You will face your fears and the road will still be full of ups and downs. But by going out there, you'll finally discover that the ultimate destination is yourself. And with that in mind, think about the impact you can make or are already making. And I'm not just talking about personal development here. I'm talking about how we can better develop ourselves together as a human race. So I'd like to leave you with this one question. Tomorrow or the next day when you will be in your daily routine again, and then think about this. How far are you willing to travel to find yourself? Thank you.